So in this question, we have a pipe that is filled with some hot water, and the temperature of that hot water would be indicated by T sub H, and then in the surroundings, there's a cooler temperature, which we have labeled T sub C. And what happens is energy is going to be transferred from the hot water outside of the pipe to the cooler environment. So you can imagine the energy being lost through the pipe in this direction from hot to cold. And the rate at which that energy is transferred is going to depend on a few different factors. First of all, it's going to depend on the thickness of the insulation. Now, this question noted that the insulation is 1.5 centimeters thick, so we already know that L is going to equal 1.5 centimeters. The rate at which energy transfers is also dependent upon these temperatures. Now, the inside temperature of the pipe where the water is circulating is 200 degrees Celsius, and then the outside temperature in the surroundings, that T sub C, is 20 degrees Celsius. We also have another factor to consider, and that would be the area of the pipe. Now this one's a little tricky to visualize, but the area of the pipe is going to be the cross-sectional excuse me, it's not the cross-sectional area, it's the lateral area of the pipe. So if you draw the pipe in this orientation, the amount of area that the energy transfers through would be this area right here. Now if you unfolded that pipe, you would form a rectangular surface like this. And that rectangle could be denoted by a length L. And then this dimension right here would actually be the circumference of the pipe. And we can easily calculate the area because the circumference was given as 800 centimeters and then the length of the pipe was given as 50 meters. Now we know the area of a rectangle is just the length times the width or in this case the length times the circumference. So we're going to just scoot down here and we're going to calculate the area by taking the circumference which was 800 centimeters. Let's divide that by 100 to get it into meters. So 8 meters multiplied by the length of the pipe, which was stated to be 50 meters, and that area turns out to be 400 meters squared. So there's one more factor to consider regarding the rate of energy loss, and that is this number right here, this so-called thermal conductivity. That is given in a non-standard unit. We're going to take that 0.2 calories per centimeter degree Celsius seconds and convert that into a standard unit. Now that thermal conductivity is denoted as a Greek letter kappa. Let's write down the value given in the question. And then we will convert this to a standard unit. Of course, centimeters needs to be converted into meters. We all know 100 centimeters is present in one meter. And if we multiply by that conversion, these centimeters will cancel. And then we also perhaps know that one calorie is equivalent to 4.186 joules. And if we multiply by that conversion factor, the calories will cancel out. So we'll punch this into our calculator and get 83.72. And then dimensionally, we now have joules per meter seconds degree Celsius. So we can write that out, kind of an awkward unit, but in no particular order, degree Celsius, seconds, meters, that will suffice. So now we have everything that we need to calculate the rate of energy loss, and we'll do so by using the following equation. And so this is the so-called power or rate at which energy is transferred through that insulating material to the outside surroundings. We'll plug in the value that we just obtained for K, followed by the area A, which was that 400 meters squared. And then we had the hot temperature, which was 200 degrees Celsius minus the cooler surrounding temperature of 20 degrees Celsius divided by the thickness of that insulation. Now remember, that was one and a half centimeters. Divide that by 100 to get it into meters, so you have 0.015 meters. Let's pick up our calculator and punch this in. And when you do so, you get this rather large number. Now dimensionally, the meters squared in the numerator and then in the denominator we have also meters squared when we multiply those meters will cancel out and then the degree Celsius in the denominator will cancel the degree Celsius in the numerator and if you look carefully you are left with joules per second which is also known as a watt now your homework system might want you to convert that into megawatts so one megawatt is equivalent to a million watts and if we multiply that the watts will cancel out and we will be left with approximately 402 megawatts. This is the correct answer to the question. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it. But of course, please don't feel obligated to do so.